Howdy folks, we're going to turn this inch and a quarter PVC pipe and a couple of end plugs into a 40 meter coil suitable for the MFJ 1979 quarter wave whip. So let's get over to the bench and uh, check it out. Okay, so the first thing I did was that um, quarter inch and a quarter PVC I cut down to 80 millimeters, 80 millimeters in length. Um, I did that based on several videos I saw for other 40, 40 meter coils. Um, and the other, let's, let's see, the other thing I did was go to um, Home Depot and I found these end plugs. So those just slide in just like that. Okay, and what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to cut this lip off and then put this in backwards and glue it in place. So it's going to slide all the way down. It'll be flush uh, with the end, maybe a little bit extra. And the uh, quarter, sorry, the 3 8 24 bolt will go right through here with uh, a couple of nuts to capture it. Uh, I have from our favorite uh, hardware store, major chain hardware store, <laughs> uh, 3 8 24. And yes, these are zinc plated, um, but uh, I'm here in California, so these will last maybe through one season. Um, also, I don't want to spend stainless steel hardware right now and uh, maybe not have a functioning coil. So I'm going to save some money, use a little bit of zinc hardware uh, that will get changed out if the design works. So also I have a 3 8 24 union, um, which is going to be needed um, for one end. So either either on this end or that end so it can mate with the the antenna the whip um, and also screw down into the base so anyway i also got the um, 3 8 24 block washers these are internal tooth washers um, uh, and some 3 8 wa uh, regular washers and we'll be using that so the idea here is um, we're going to use like a magnet wire of say, ooh, I'm gonna go with a 20 gauge, 20 gauge or 22 gauge magnet wire. I'm not running a lot of power here, uh, 50 watts max, but uh, uh, 18 gauge might also work. I haven't decided yet. What we're gonna do is uh, we're going to wrap a coil that's about approximately 37 millimeters in in overall coil length wound on on this form here and i'm going to actually add another maybe five or six turns to this um, and the reason being is i want to start with a coil that's a little bit long and then if i have to uh, um, make an adjustment i can always remove wire it's easier to remove wire off of a coil um, than it is to add. So yeah, we're going to start with, I want to make a measurement on here, 37 millimeters between two points. I'm going to wind it up. I'm uh, going to install the, the caps. Obviously the caps will go backwards. A uh, 3 8 24 is going to go through the opposite side, like right in there with a few washers. Come out the uh, top. Uh, I have a bunch of 3 8 24 nuts here that I'm going to use to uh, lock the, the bolt in place. And then one end will get the union so that it will marry up with uh, the antenna. So, um, yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll get to go in on the, uh, the uh, winding of the coil and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, we've... Uh created our coil. What I've done here is um, this is 16 gauge magnet wire um, and we have approximately 
28 turns on the uh, our coil form and uh, what I've done here is uh, I don't know if you can see that but this end that won't be um, adjustable has two holes for the wire to pass in and then out of because it goes in here and then out here and it just has like a pigtail here that we'll be using later on on this side this will this side will be adjustable and there's a set of two here there's a set of two 120 degrees off from that one and another set of two 120 degrees from that one so there's actually uh, three sets of two one two three sets of two what that will allow us to do is if I need to uh, adjust the coil just a third of a turn I can pull this out pull it apart run it through these sets of holes uh, if I need two-thirds of a of a turn taken off I can come all, all the way over here so basically it gives us a little bit, bit extra functionality as far as how many how many turns are taken off so you might see this uh, uh, yellowish uh, clear tape that's called capped on tape um, and in order to temporarily hold the coil the coil for nice and firm and tight I uh, wrapped our coil with the uh, uh, capped on tape so I uh, left a little bit of room here this is the original plug I took the lip off of it so now the plug will go in backwards and it gives us a nice place to put our hardware into the uh, coil form and then what I'll probably end up using is uh, epoxy or maybe JB Weld and I'll fill in and seal this gap and let it uh, cure uh, with the JB Weld. So as far as the hardware setup uh, for this guy, what we're going to do is this is 3 8 24 um, at an uh, inch and a half, I believe. Let's put that sucker down there. Yeah, I think that's an inch and a half. I don't know if you can see that. Let's go over here. Yeah, so that's an inch and a half, 3 8 24. You can also find the all thread, but I found that this little shoulder here it doesn't really matter once you get it all set up inside this because it's a, it's a relatively thick piece of plastic. So uh, 3 8 24 into a washer, that into the cap. Press all the way down in there, and you can see just a little tiny bit of the shoulder is peeking through. So that's not too bad. Okay, so that uh, and a um, split washer. This is a, uh, actually, this one actually is a stainless steel split washer. So we're going to put that on like that. Oh, sorry. Another flat washer. Let's see. Let's grab a flat washer out of one of these packages. Pardon me. I open up one of these. Okay. Another flat washer. So both sides have flat washers now. Under the cap and up against the plastic. A split washer and two nuts. The first nut is going to actually be the nut that's holding this all together inside the cap. And so you're going to, want to crank this down tight. Um, I'd suggest maybe a deep socket here. I think that's uh, 7 16 possibly. Um, and another deep socket here. And uh, use a ratchet and kind of crank this down good until the, the uh, split washer is completely tight. Um, then this one. A little bit lighter basically finger tight what's going to happen is the wire is going to wrap around that and this will give you enough threading here for going into the antenna mount and the other side will have uh, the union so if this is the other side and this is all cranked down you're going to have a good uh, over a quarter inch of threading here that you can put the union on and now your antenna mast can go into that. 
So that's basically the setup. Both sides are gonna be identical to this. Uh, basically, uh, I'll just assemble the other side real quick. So yet another flat washer. Okay. A lock washer on top of that. Two nuts. And And two, all done. This bottom one will have to be uh, cranked down pretty tightly. So here are the two ends. And so those will get cemented, as I said, on either end of the coil form and then the wire will get attached here this this wire will get attached to here and uh, we'll start doing some measurements so uh, I'm going to finish all this assembly here and then uh, we'll go and test the antenna outside somewhere and uh, see how our tuning is and if we need to we will uh, uh, I'll do something temporary as far as the cementing on this side so I can still get it apart and undo a coil winding or two. Uh, maybe a set screw or something. Uh, this side will be cemented um, and completely done. This side I'll leave open so I can make adjustments. So that's pretty much it. Howdy folks. So uh, here's our whip and our tripod. Let me just show you what's been done with the coil so far. Uh, at the bottom is a good amount of JB weld. This section is basically permanent. Um, at the top I found some number four plastic screws. Not that the screw is plastic but uh, it's got the threading kind of like an uh, auger kind of thread that really bites into plastic. And I got three of them here at 120 degrees apart. That allows me to temporarily set this thing up, as you can see right now, uh, make some adjustments to the coil, and uh, put it back together. When I get the uh, final adjustment, then I'll JB weld this whole thing, just like the bottom is. So there's our puck, there's our uh, coax, and a couple of ground radials. They're not exactly the right ground radials for 40, uh, but for tuning right now, it will, it will suffice. So uh, let's go back to the V&A and I'll show you how, uh, how far I'm off on the first go around. I hope this comes out. Let's turn this thing back on. All right, I don't even know if this is gonna show up on the phone, but uh, uh, shit, that's not going to work very well. There's too much freaking glare. And I'm not getting a good focus. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to spin the dial here. I know you probably can't see this, but I'm going to tune it, or move the marker around until I get to what looks like the tuning point and I'm at 4.5 megahertz so I am seriously long if you will on the antenna or the inductance is very high so I'm gonna have to take some windings off and move that up so I'll be right back okay side note I managed to get down to about 6.9 megahertz uh, adjusting that coil then I started seeing something funny with the Nano VNA, so I uh, figured it's probably a bad connection, uh, either in the, uh, the the puck or the pod that you know I'm plugging the whip into or the coil. So I took a break. It's really hot. Uh, instead, I changed gears, um, starting to figure out uh, I'm going to need longer radials than what I have uh, when working on uh, 40. So uh, I went to Home Depot, I got uh, 
a uh, 100 foot roll of uh, speaker wire. Um, I'm gonna uh, make several radials, eight radials at 25 feet, uh, put banana jacks on them, uh, and then uh, set the whole thing up here again uh, at the uh, QTH. Um, start working with the Nano VNA a little bit more. I think I only need maybe a half a turn off. I'm currently at 15 turns on that uh, inch and a quarter PVC form. Uh, 15 turns is giving me uh, about 6.9 megahertz. So I'll probably take a turn off, maybe turn in a half, and I'll get into the uh, 7.1. <clears throat> Hopefully I'm looking for 7.15 as being the center of resonance on this antenna. But uh, yep, going to make some 25 foot radials, uh, get those connected uh, and continue tuning. Okay. All right. Okay. Let me show you where we're at so far in terms of tuning. We are now at uh, 14 turns. If you can get this uh, to focus a little bit better. Yeah, we are at 14 turns and they're spread out just about a fingernail width. Um, and so far that's given me a good response on the uh, VNA, which is way over here. So I'm hoping this time it comes out a little better. Let's see. All right. So, um, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, I'm starting to get into 7.1, 7.16, 7.2. About a 7.28 is where I'm getting a 1.36 to 1 SWR. So, uh, if anything, I'm a little bit uh, on the high side of the... Uh, 40 meter band, uh, but I'll take that. So uh, now it's time to um, hook up the uh, amplifier and the the G90 to the antenna, and see if I can make some uh, contacts on 40. Okay, 7310. Yeah, it's uh, who's uh, KI6JL. Okay, W6DKW again. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that you guys were uh, wondering what kind of vertical I'm running. It's a uh, it's a 17 foot uh, collapsible whip with a coil at the uh, end, uh, making it about a 40 meter antenna. I'm on the uh, Zygo G90, so that's about um, uh, about 20 watts. Yeah, well, that's good. You're doing okay. And those things uh, when they're on the rear bumper, uh, is it on our vehicle or are you using it off the balcony or what? Uh, I got a little uh, tripod for it, uh, a little short squat tripod. Um, and then um, I have uh, eight radials that are stretched out along the ground. Yeah, well, it's working okay for what it is. Is that what you're limited to, that type of antenna? Yeah, it's a, kind of an experiment. Uh, I wanted to see if it was possible to make a decent 40-meter uh, uh, vertical whip. Yep, 73 to you, W6DKW clear. 
Okay, final coil set up. You can see I have uh, eight of these 25-foot radials. They're all tied into these BNC connectors. Um, so, uh, yeah, they, they run out in all directions. It's just a speaker wire. But uh, that's a good shot of the final coil assembly. Yeah, and so now I think I, now that I've got it dialed in, I'm going to do some uh, JB Weld uh, along here and uh, solid, uh, make the whole thing solid. Maybe put some uh, heat shrink or something across it or uh, maybe a, a little bit of epoxy, something uh, along the ends, but that's the, uh, that's the entire thing. All right, thanks for joining me on that adventure. W6DKW, out.